Welcome to the anechoic chamber at the University of Salford. If you look around you, you'll see all these strange grey wedges. They're even on the floor down below, though they're hidden under this net. And they're there to absorb any sound that hits the walls. So that as I talk to you, you get the sound direct from me to the microphone in the middle and nothing, no reflections at all. And this is the reason it sounds so weird. To you, it probably sounds quite dead. To me, it sounds like, well, my voice has lost all its power. It's a bit like my ears need to pop. I'm in an aircraft and I can't quite hear right. And I can give you a sense of how absorbent the walls are by talking to you, but turning around and facing into the wedges. And you'll notice how the level of the noise drops quite dramatically. You can still get a bit of my voice because it leaks around my head, but all the reflections have disappeared. I can give you another demonstration of that by using a balloon. I mean, you've all probably burst a balloon at some point in your life and heard it bang. Well, in this space, it doesn't sound quite so impressive. So this is a non-room in terms of acoustics. We might have walls we can see, but we can't hear them. And that's the reason some people find this place rather disconcerting. And in fact, when we bring visitors in here, a certain number will ask to leave. But it's really useful for acoustic testing. Let's say I wanted to test a loudspeaker. If I go and put that loudspeaker in a normal laboratory, I get not just the sound coming off the loudspeaker, but I get the reflections from a room. I don't get the loudspeaker in isolation. In here, I can just get the item I'm measuring on its own. But this sort of disconcerting effect has led to many rumours about whether anechoic chambers can create things like hallucinations. Now I've never experienced them myself but there is a scientific study that shows that people who are susceptible to hallucinations can indeed hear them or even see them in an anechoic chamber. You'd need to turn the lights off because you need to have sensory deprivation and you would also need to be in here for a little bit of time. But my brain doesn't it doesn't do this and it's probably because I'm not susceptible to such effects but also because I've worked in here for many years and therefore my brain has got used to going well this is weird isn't it the room is looks like it's here but you can't actually hear it so my brain has normalized this kind of space now we're making this recording using a sound film mic so I don't know if you've been following me around the room but if you actually leave me where you are and spin the room around so don't look at me anymore you might notice how the sound surrounds you and comes from different directions. The other feature of this room is that it's very, very quiet. You won't get that down the microphone, I'm, I'm afraid. But if I shut up myself, the only sound that I can hear, as well maybe a little bit from these fluorescent bulbs that are around, because they whine a bit at very high frequency. We have to turn them off when we're testing. Um, but any other sound is from my body. There's two sounds that are typically heard and were described by John Cage, who wrote the very famous silent work 4 minute 33 seconds. He went into an anechoic chamber in Harvard and was inspired to write that work because he didn't find silence. And two sounds he heard came from his body. The first was the heart beating in the head, a bit like when you're exercising and your heart's pounding quite fast. The other one is a high pitched hissing sound and that sound, if you have it, is probably spontaneous firings on the auditory nerve. Your brain kind of turning up the volume level to try and listen out for any sounds. And of course, there aren't any in here apart from what you generate yourself. Now, if you want to come and visit, we do open up the anechoic chamber for most of our open days. So we have course open days for new students. And often we allow the public in at that time to come have a tour. And that's when you'll really appreciate how incredibly weird this space sounds.